Bonjour, Black Knight Scholars. This is Mr. Deegan with another edition of VidNotes videos. We're continuing our study of Unit 4, The Era of Revolutions. And this lesson, Lesson 3, we are dealing with the Enlightenment. And I talk in French, Bonjour, because we're going to be talking mostly about French philosophers. And so you're going to be needing to turn to page six and page seven of your unit four VidNotes packet. You see here a painting of a French salon. The people in this room are not getting haircuts. They are talking about philosophy. They're called French philosophes, and they're talking about big questions of the day. That's what the Enlightenment was all about. So what is the Enlightenment? The Enlightenment is a period in history in which philosophers applied reason to the human world. When was it? It took place in the 1600s and the 1700s in Europe. And these philosophes in this room and in Europe in general saw Newton's law of gravity and they said to themselves, if there were rules that explain how objects in the sky behave, then there must be laws in nature that explain how people behave. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. What did the Enlightenment accomplish? Why do we need to talk about it? Well, it stimulated and started religious tolerance in Europe. It applied reason to the issues of law and government. What's the best way to govern? What are the best laws to use for people? And it also fueled democratic revolutions around the world. So the Enlightenment was an important time for thinkers to discover things about human nature. There were events leading up to the Enlightenment. We have the Renaissance. This is the School of Athens painting that shows the study of the classics. During the Renaissance, people were exploring new ideas outside of religion. We have Martin Luther, who's exploring ideas outside of the Catholic Church. And we have the scientific revolution, which is also exploring ideas outside of that little box of the Catholic Church. Now, all of these historical periods are talking about the ability for one person to think for themselves. Are you a robot? or do you think for yourself? You see in this painting, this man has broken away from the puppet master. You might say that before the enlightenment, you had people who were telling people lower down how to think. Well, the enlightenment says each person, just by being a human being, has the right to think for themselves. The guiding question we're going to use today to guide our study of the Enlightenment is, are humans born evil? This was a big question the philosophers tackled. If you say yes, you might think that humans are born with chaos and sin, and they need the help of a strong government in order to keep order in a society. If you say humans are not born evil, they're born good, and who's to blame you? Look at this cute baby. It's hard to think that this baby is born evil. So perhaps this baby is born good and the world corrupts the baby and makes her evil. The world poisons with certain things that might be explicit. Now we're going to start talking about some of the major philosophers who answered these big questions. And the first we're going to talk about is Thomas Hobbes. He's from England. And here's a picture of him pondering. And Thomas Hobbes believed that humans are born sinful and selfish, and they need a strong government to protect them from their evil 
tendencies. Hobbes said without a strong government, humans would constantly be at war with each other. Humans can't help themselves, according to Hobbes. So he believed that the type of government that is best is an absolute monarchy because only a strong ruler could keep the peace. So Thomas Hobbes would be an advocate for rulers like Louis XIV of France and Peter the Great of Russia. He would say these two men represented the best kind of government. And Hobbes summed up his beliefs in his most important writing, which was called Leviathan. On the other side of the argument, John Locke of England, he believed in the good in human nature. Here's John Locke, and he said, every human is born sovereign, meaning independent, with the ability to use reason independently. Also, every human is born with the natural rights of life, liberty, and property. Locke says it is the government's job to protect these rights. Locke said the form of government that is best is a democracy. Why? Because it allows people to govern themselves and to use their ability to reason and not, excuse me, be controlled by someone higher than them on the hierarchy. And Locke's major work was the two treatises on government. Locke inspired the founders of America. He inspired Thomas Jefferson in writing the Declaration of Independence. Another philosopher is from France, oui, oui, and it is Baron de Montesquieu. Here he is. And Montesquieu believed that society is naturally divided into classes, but this natural divide, which is shown in feudalism, is bad and should be abolished. So this pecking order where the king's at the top and the peasants are at the bottom, he said this is not good. And he instead believed in a separation of powers. He said a government should have more than one branch so that no one person or one group gains too much power within the government because power can corrupt and make good people do terrible things. So Baron de Montesquieu inspired our three branches of government system with the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch that we have today. And Montesquieu summed all of this up in his book called The Spirit of Laws. Jean-Jacques Rousseau is our next philosopher from France. Here he is with the fashionable French wig and wear of the day. And what did he believe about society? Rousseau believed that humans are born as a blank slate but the influences of society often have a negative impact on someone. Rousseau believed that any kind of government is a social contract between the rulers and the citizens. And in this contract, the citizen's job is to obey the law to prevent chaos. And the government's job in this contract is to protect its citizens. And Rousseau's most famous writing was called The Social Contract. Next, another French philosopher. This philosopher's name was Voltaire. He gave himself this pen name. It was not his birth name. Voltaire, you see him here, another fashionable French wig, and he believed in religious toleration. He believed religious toleration should triumph over religious fanaticism. Religious fanatics made a society worse off. And Voltaire believed it's the government's job to ensure a separation of church and state. And the founding fathers of the United States used his ideas in our constitution. And the book that he expressed these ideas in was called 
Candide. Voltaire's work is Candide. What influence did the Enlightenment have after it was over? Well, the Enlightenment first influenced leaders of the American Revolution and the writing of the Declaration of Independence. More specifically, Thomas Jefferson used John Locke's ideas of life, liberty, and property, and the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, two of the most important founding documents in our country's history, incorporated Enlightenment ideas. Moving to Europe, the Enlightenment sparked the French Revolution of the 1790s. After the American Revolution, the French have a revolution of their own, and they use Locke and Montesquieu and Rousseau and Voltaire to feed their revolution. We're almost done, Black Knight scholars. We have but a few summary questions remaining. And those summary questions include taking a look at this glass right here that I'm holding. Is this glass half empty or is it half full? It's a way of looking at the world. We're using reason to see whether the world is a pessimistic or optimistic place. When you're done, we have a preview. Next lesson, we're going to be traveling to England to talk about a civil war in the 1600s between King Charles I and the Puritan Oliver Cromwell. Until next time, this is Mr. Deegan saying so long.